reacting to Lutin. But we're not starting with the Emperor of Man, okay? We are starting with a shorter video as an introduction video to Lutin. Uh, that is called What the is Warhammer 40k? I just want to introduce myself, familiarize myself with Lutin's content videos, right? That are like more slow paced, more like um, audiobook like, very, very, very detailed. So I'm gonna start with that one. And after that is going to be the Emperor of Men. This was the video that Luton recommended to me three years ago when I was, when I asked him like, how do I start? And he's like, okay, like, watch this video. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I never did. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> No, I can't. <laughs> like this is too much. I cannot get get into a get into a fandom. I can't. I cannot afford getting to a new hobby. Like this is too overwhelming. And this is funny because, um, uh, because uh, I DM'd Luton today saying that I'm starting to watch his videos uh, on stream and reacting to them, and I'm going to start with this one. And he's like, "Oh shit! Like I think that this video is pretty outdated." Uh, it's from four years ago you know it's funny how he first recommended it to me three years ago and now after all this time he thinks that it's already updated like i know that everybody knows Luton, so i don't know if there's a point in giving looting a shout out on youtube but still if you don't if you're new to warhammer then I, my voice is failing oh my god <laughs> then, then please check him out if you haven't yet Ooh. Damn, that's a nice intro. It's, it's almost like a movie, like, right? It has a very, like, cinema feel to it. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. The Emperor of Man, the Carrion Lord. Hold on. For whom a thousand souls die every day, human blood, human flesh, the stuff of which the Imperium is made. Forget the promise of progress and understanding, for there is no peace among the stars. The universe is a big place, and whatever happens, you will not be missed. Adeptus Illuminati. Okay. <laughs> Okay, couldn't have said it better myself. So now it's 10,000 souls every day, right? It's even more these days. Welcome to the first in my series of primers focused on the universe of Warhammer 40,000. If you're watching this, you may well be brand new to the all-encompassing hobby we call 40k. But what is it? What's it all about and why should you consider looking into it any further? Well, for one reason, in recent times, people's appetites have been reawakened to highly immersive TV series like Game of Thrones or movie franchises with a decent backstory. 40k goes considerably far beyond these examples. It is one of the biggest miniature war games in the world and features an ever-evolving story that expands in written text video games and of course its original and arguably most important feature the miniatures and its tabletop game. It is created and owned by Games Workshop, a UK based company producing tabletop games and associated materials. Now I will cover elements of 40k as briefly as I can today but I won't skimp on detail just for the sake of time. It's as to the point as I can make it but if you want to know more about specifics here on my channel I've covered in detail some of the core background areas of the game which is continuing to expand. I'll also be continuing to produce these short primers to the world of 40k and I'll also be continuing to make the longer form content which is featured regularly here on the channel. I wonder how difficult it was for Luton to make such a short video. This is only 22 minutes compared to like the usual, um, the usual type of content that he makes, which is like over an hour, sometimes two hour videos. <laughs> Whenever I release a video, there's like a ton of comments uh, telling me to watch Hell's Reach. Y'all, guys, I know, <laughs> I know you want me to watch Hell's Reach. I will, I will. I really want to understand. I would really want to be able to understand it. This, this, this is why I'm watching. Like not as many, but 
to my understanding, enough lore videos to not be like completely lost uh, while watching Hell's Reach. Okay, so bear with me. I think after a few of Luton's videos, I'll be ready for Hell's Reach. I know it's like a it's a, it's a long one. It's a, it's like a two and a half hour. Often referred to by those already consumed by Warhammer 40,000 as the hobby, 40k is not one thing to one person. It is a highly detailed narrative spanning multiple empires from world-ending galactic campaigns to lowly individual soldier stories. It is a series of usually middle-of-the-road video games with a few standout gems, it's a hobby of addictive miniature painting and crafting, and it is a tabletop war game now established for over 30 years. It has spawned a variety of smaller games designed to be played without acquiring a huge army, games like Space Hulk, Necromunda and Kill Team, and these often require only say 6 to 10 pieces per side and are very accessible for new players, whereas standard Warhammer 40,000 tabletop may require larger armies with many many pieces. Now before we come to the lore, it is worth looking at the original tabletop game as this will give you a better understanding of just everything oh, about it. Oh, that's never cool! I have never watched a single video about explaining anything about the tabletop. So yeah, like I said, I'm getting a Kill Team Starter Edition being delivered to me soonish. So yeah, I'm excited. Thank you again, Detac, uh, for gifting it to me. Shout out. Shout out to this amazing person. Seen or encountered a tabletop game, this is not important. It's this actually is crazy. very simple. Usually two players will engage in a battle laid out on a table at your home or a gaming venue. The area of play will be set with terrain pieces often crafted and painted by the players and they will alternate turns moving you their miniature soldiers or vehicles this. and will resolve engagements through random dice rolls according to specific rules and combinations of preset units. I'm starting to like Necrons. Hey, I liked Tyrannus before. I think, you know, liking uh, Necrons is like a step in the, in the right direction, actually. <laughs> you, need a, you need a mansion to play this. Like, look at that battlefield. That was immense. Be a mission for one side to achieve, and these games can be highly strict or open to player interpretations. Players will usually paint their miniature soldiers for use on the battlefield, and these can be in a variety of factional designs and colors. Some people prefer their involvement in 40k to be focused entirely on Euro this high. hobby of painting, designing, and modifying these miniature units. And this part of 40k can be just as all-consuming as the lore or the tabletop. Some may choose to split their time between each part or devote all their hobby time the to one piece of the whole 40k hobby, be that the lore, tabletop or the painting designing element. Now comes the challenge for me, summarizing 40k. So oh my god, yeah, good luck with that, Luton. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to say something about the miniatures. Like, I still don't know the why people like it so much. Like, what's so special about it? Why people get addicted to painting the miniatures? I still don't understand it because I haven't tried it yet. So like I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, yeah, it looks cool. It's like, you know, toy soldiers that you paint. But like, why, why people, pe people spend uh, thousands of dollars on their armies? And uh, what is so addicting about it? I am so, so, so curious because what if I get addicted? Like who's going to sponsor that uh, expensive hobby of mine? <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe get, I'm gonna I'm gonna regret. Maybe I'm gonna regret it. Maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> okay, I'm crazy about makeup. I guess I I fall into a, uh, a risk group. <laughs> Is that what it's called? <laughs> to get addicted to them. I think for me it's gonna be about the painting and collecting because I know myself rather than playing. Right. And I really want to read the books. Books, books, books. Lore, lore, lore. And video games, of course. Warhammer 40,000 is set in the distant future. A future beset by galactic war from a skirmishing city turf war level through to planetary conquest and system-wide campaigns fought oh through its space and planets. It is far more sister. pessimistic than most other deep lore universes and also regularly borders Smash. on what you would describe as space horror. Now 40k is primarily focused around humanity, which has through many thousands of years achieved an unimaginable level of technology. Humanity after this ancient war was left broken and fragmented across the galaxy. It would be later reunified by one godlike individual known as the Emperor of Man, and he would set in motion the new order for mankind known as the Imperium of Man. 
but a devastating civil war known as the Horus Heresy would befall mankind before the Emperor could Aww. complete his goals for humanity and he would instead now become a living corpse enshrined on Earth or Terra. Humanity would become shattered by this civil war and after a slow painful recovery it has become for the longest time a stagnant civilization. Suffocating under its own bureaucracy, the Imperium has begun making the smallest steps toward advancement in the most recent days of its history, but it still stands as a strange juxtaposition of ancient tech that is beyond the comprehension of many of its citizens. It is a weak and precarious civilization simultaneously able to wield immense military power. Humanity itself through thousands of years of conflict with alien races who are more often than not excessively hostile has become a highly xenophobic race. It views almost all other races as needing to be exterminated and has almost no morals or ethics as to how this is to be achieved. The galaxy spanning empire of humanity is essentially a totalitarian state that worships the emperor of man. The imperium of man has large if not complete- Are these, ser are these servitors? No, are those the psychics that are being- sacrificed to keep the to keep the throne running what is this picture i was always wondering how do they exactly do this control over its citizens With the big including spoon. many aspects of their lives economy social life education private lives science and indoctrination into its ideology any who are not seen to be a follower of the Emperor may and will be persecuted as heretics and this is often largely open to interpretation and leads Smash. to large-scale abuses of power and executions. The Imperium uses this deeply entrenched worship and Imperial ideology to control and mobilize mass populations of its citizenry for its armies like the Imperial Guard and Imperial Fleet. It also will utilize its citizens to fulfill whatever role is needed. These roles can and often are fairly unpleasant, especially when the rule of law is often severe and absolute. Humanity also wields in its arsenal the Emperor's greatest gift, the military sledgehammer known as the Imperial Astartes. These are the iconic space marines, genetically enhanced superhuman warriors who represent the pinnacle of human modification and military power. Their forces have access to some of the most powerful weapons and force multipliers humanity wields. Much of this tech is ancient and requires careful care and repair by specialists dedicated to retaining this critical knowledge. But as powerful as humanity is, even with its small progression in its most recent times, it still stands on the edge of annihilation by various alien races or entities. Humanity somehow has survived to this point despite being at an almost permanent risk of complete destruction and forced extinction. Within the law, this has nearly happened on multiple occasions and what is left of humanity now in the Imperium of Man are the remnants of those survivors. A highly Remnants? Remnants of those survivors? Nonetheless, they somehow managed to feed 10,000 souls a day to keep the emperor alive. Like, you're saying that uh, there are swarms of tyranids. There are swarms of men. <laughs> there, are swarms of, there are swarms of people too. Like, how many? What's the population? How the hell are there so many people to just like waste like this? I like I never even thought about it. I, I was like, how does the humanity even have a chance to fight back all these dangers? Because numbers, I guess. <laughs> there are many. Ignorant, fearful people in a fairly constant state of decay where critical technological information is often lost. The Imperium and Humanity's primary goals are to locate lost technology from the zenith period of mankind, known as the Dark Age of Technology, otherwise referred to as the Golden Age. It also focuses upon the continued defense and expansion of its territories, and of course the extermination of all alien races, known collectively as the Xenos. Because humanity has become so violently and ignorantly xenophobic in the far future, it also has no qualms about committing planetary levels of genocide. If you're not human and don't worship the Emperor, then you are the enemy, a heretic and must be exterminated. Diplomacy is almost not a thing for the Imperium and the usual recourse is to just shoot on sight. In fairness though, there was a time where humanity had attempted a more diplomatic approach, but this over time has just disintegrated I am sorry, they have cats? I am sorry, there are cats in Warhammer?
I think that was a Tao the, the, the dissection table. <laughs> How the hell do they have cats? Imperial cats? Wait, I've been I've been watching Warhammer lore for the past month and I have never heard or seen anything about cats. And cats are not heresy. Cats serve the emperor. Cats are good boys and girls. We need uh, some cat lore. Warhammer 40k cat lore video. Oh my god. I would totally watch that. Oh, that is so cool. I have a cat. I have a black cat that I adopted. It's so kitty. It's so baby. So yeah, I have one of these motherfuckers. With most of its contact with the aliens resulting in Squeeze. some kind of conflict, it now simply believes all <laughs> other life must cats. be extinguished, or at the very least dominated and enslaved for work or experimentation. These cases are usually quite rare. There are six other races that are seen as the enemies of humanity. Any of these factions can be played by you within the tabletop game of 40k or models for collecting and painting. Some, Some players badass. will dedicate themselves entirely to one faction, building it up, fleshing it out to the limit of their model making ability, and others may have multiple armies of different factions. I really like how they paint Xeno, oh, Xeno, sorry, Tyranids. The Necrons are a very ancient race, strange creatures that appear like metallic skeletons. They're actually formed of living metal. They span the galaxy and are in a continuing state of awakening from their tombs after many thousands of years of sleep. They seek to rebuild their empire and dominate the galaxy. One of their key abilities is that of reanimation. They can reassemble themselves after death and fight on. They're also generally mindless automatons. How this came to be is another story. Yeah, back to Again, the, back to the uh, Necron tier and stuff. I don't know what Luton, what topics Luton cover in the Emperor of Man videos. Probably not Xenos, but I would love to watch his uh, lore videos on, on some Xeno factions as well. Like the Orcs, we're 100% are going to watch. I want to watch Harlequins too. But yeah, we will get there. Chubb has seen fit to recently rename some of its units, largely it seems for legal reasons, but since forever this faction has been known as the Eldar. More recently it is known as the Eldari, but basically it's the Eldar. These are derived from the elves of many more fantasy games and are basically space elves. Despite this quite simplistic analogy, the Eldar have a rich and tragic lore. Because of past disasters that have left the Eldar with no homeworlds to the speak of, worlds. they now travel the galaxy Wait, in sorry, vast hive. ships uh, known as craft worlds. Craft the worlds. Eldar wield powerful weapons but the are generally physically worlds. weak and they also have immense arrogance towards other races. Their defining feature and to some degree their biggest flaw is that the Eldar are very powerful when it comes to psychers and psychic abilities drawn from the warp. Mm -hmm. The Dark Eldar are essentially space pirates who live lives of excess and sadistic torture porn. Anyone who looks like they're about to be captured by the Dark Eldar is rarely something that you would want to contemplate and suicide would generally be significantly preferable. A faction of many faces and contradicting goals. Chaos is as its name describes, and it originates from the parallel dimension known as the Warp. warp. This dimension is a reactive plane of existence that absorbs the most powerful emotions and desires of mortal creatures. The reactive immaterium would lead to the birth of entities of godlike power, the Chaos Gods. They each focus on specific mortal desires. Korn is the god of blood, representing war, rage, and hatred. Zinch is the changer representing ambition, scheming, conspiracy. Oh, wow. I've never seen this picture of Zinch. I really like it. The one that Breaky used in his videos looks totally different than this one. It's like a two-headed eagle, almost like the symbol of the Empire. Imper sorry, the Imperium. Is that Zinch? Oh, that's not him. Ah, that's Kairos. Okay, okay, okay. I thought that was Zinj. Champion. Okay, okay. And sorcery. Nurgle is the plague god, representing Papa. mortality, morbidity, and despair. And Slanesh is the god of Slanesh. lust, greed, excess, pleasure, pain, and perfection. The continuing desires and emotions of the galaxy's inhabitants sustain these entities. However, they also reach out into the mortal realm through their manifested entities made from the warp known as demons. And these hellish creatures are enough to send ordinary citizens insane on sight. They're backed by traitors to the Imperium, the corrupted Chaos Space Marines. 
The gods of chaos and their agents can also infect the minds of mortals, and often cults and worshippers may spring up on planets across the Imperium. This is again one reason why the Imperium of Man is so ruthless about purging heretics. While chaos itself in the material world appears as one enemy that simply wages war, it is in fact in an internal conflict within itself. Each of the Chaos Gods fights for domination over the others, and this occupies the majority of their focus and energy. Each God's ultimate goal is complete domination of the Immaterium, a goal which seems unattainable and dangerous to their own existence were it to come to pass. Chaos is one of the most varied and pervasive forces in 40k and has many forces operating under its banner, some dedicated to a specific God, others that simply worship Chaos undivided. Oh. Okay. Ooh, the orcs! Now everybody knows the orcs, right? Middle Earth and all that crap? Not these orcs. These are more Mad Max Fury Road crossed with British football hooligans and <laughs> then you're in the right ballpark, uh, also in space. They're space crazy. orcs are likely a genetically designed species focused for hyper-violence and to be almost impossible to permanently exterminate. They are as hilarious as they are dangerous, and their entire society focuses around casual violence. The orcs, though, are also probably the most sunny and optimistic of all races, strangely. Oh, they their genetic disposition sets them to see things as generally good and enjoyable, especially when it comes to fighting. And they never <laughs> really see failure as a negative, because they it means wholesome. you just get to have another go later. They also operate more on instinct by design than learned knowledge and their willpower becomes more powerful the more orcs are present, meaning when they are collected en masse, they can literally will things to be true by collective belief. They also uh, Rick, you mentioned um, in one of the Adeptus Ridiculous uh, episodes that they used to be actually smart, but they got dumb. <laughs> I guess like from f from fighting each other all the time they got dumber uh in the end so yeah like i wonder how that happened <laughs> so have a strange ability to just cobble together vehicles and weapons from scrap they also have no real governing structure leaders are chosen by progressively being better at smashing their rivals heads in until an orc eventually reaches the position of being a war boss when orcs collect in huge numbers they may launch a massive campaign of raiding and attacking anything that's not orc by launching a warg essentially a huge no holds barred slaughter fest anything in the way best dig in or get the hell out <laughs> The Tau are one of the newer races and are fast learning that the galaxy is not a friendly place. The Tau operate similarly to the Orcs on a more optimistic level, but that's about as far as their common ground with the Orcs goes, because the Tau exist on the fringe of the Imperium and are unusual as they actively encourage other races to join their cause. They collectively follow an ideology known as the Greater Good. This is their guiding principle that working together is better than working against one another, as this leads to a stronger, more peaceful society. However, anybody who disagrees with this best prepare for war. To be fair though, the Tau do usually attempt significant levels of diplomacy before declaring their target a lost cause. Their military is largely focused around technology and ranged combat, something often mocked and derided by their enemies. The Tau themselves are comparatively weak and use other races absorbed into their faction to fight in close quarters. Tyranids are an unusual exception to all previous Xenos. They do not operate on an ideology, a political structure or debatably a single leader. They are the most Xenos of Xenos yeah. and have begun a steady invasion of the galaxy. They are presumed to have arrived from beyond the borders of the known galaxy and are hostile in the extreme. They do not wield any technology as we would understand it or their ships, forces and weapons are biological in origin. Tyranids are one of the most nightmarish factions within 40k. Their singular goal is biomass, that is to strip planets of all biological and mineral materials, leaving them barren dead husks. Like, this they assault is so planets scary. with extreme this prejudice terrifying. and will not cease their assault unless they are damaged to a point where their acquisition of biomass becomes negative to that being expended. They use all material to birth their forces on their vast bioships 
and recycle their own units by dissolving them back into the pool of biomass which then they draw to create anything else they may need. They absorb the genetics of all that they encounter and use this to evolve and create more hostile and efficient creatures and bio machines to achieve their goal. They may How also seed and infect them? planets ahead of time to you often can't. use the planet's own inhabitants against themselves when the Tyranids arrive to destroy the world. The Tyranids are controlled en masse by something called the Hive Mind. This is essentially a broadcasted collective consciousness that enables them the powerful skill of being able to operate as one but made up of millions of individual entities across a planet. The Tyranids are horrific, seemingly unstoppable and have already wrought terrible destruction upon many others across the galaxy. I'm hungry. Many rumour that their already devastating campaigns are only the initial scouting parties to the Milky Way galaxy and if this is true, the Tyranids could be the ones to end everything. <laughs> This While not wanting scary. to touch on the subject of psychic power mm -hmm. too strongly in this video, many factions in 40k feature what are known as psychers. These are essentially individuals who can wield what you might describe in other universes as magic powers. Some factions have strong psychers and others have none, and these powers are drawn from the parallel dimension known as the warp or the immaterium. Individuals who can use these powers do so at considerable risk as the warp is an unstable and dangerous realm. The relationship between real space and warp space is a complicated one and can affect many aspects of life in the far future, but this is something best covered in another video. Okay, so psyker, psyker, <laughs> psychers, psyker abilities is considered heresy? Like, I know that, like, a uh, sanctioned, how does one become a sanctioned psyker and that, uh, you know, nobody touches you, nobody um, proclaims you a heretic, and what do you do? Like, what, what, like, like how, right? Can, do you understand? <laughs> do you understand the question? If you're an unsanctioned psyker, like Idira, then yes. But, like, the, the, the only reason why Idira is not killed yet is because she travels with the rogue trader, right? And we're her, we're her protection because we as a rogue trader can do whatever the fuck we want, even having a unsanctioned psyker in, my, in our party. So if like if you got your psyker abilities under control, then you're good. If you're like a crazy, crazy powerful wizard, then no. <laughs> they said no, no. The takeaway for you today is that Warhammer 40,000 is a world of vast scale warfare and complex interfactional and internal factional power struggles. 40k is by its very nature often absurd to the extreme. Sometimes this can be somewhat detrimental to its own narrative because when everything is supersized and extreme in the extreme, suddenly everything looks kind of the same and then it becomes arguably less impressive. However, 40k just owns its own absurdity and it's something that you just have to roll with True. and suspend your disbelief. The For many who are obsessed with 40k, the hyper-violent, xenophobic, genocidal nature of its occupants is largely a source for much dark humor. Most people that are into Warhammer, they don't take it too seriously. But it is also fun to take things in 40k very seriously because it contains so much detail. But simultaneously, there are many memes and pure nonsensical comedy that comes from 40k because of just how extreme it is. The classic It Sounds Like Heresy being one such example whereby anyone who dissents from the official line of thinking is declared a heretic <laughs> and executed on the spot. It's one that I enjoy yeah. using all the time in the comments. And the key theme of 40k is purely about war. The law is a vast, all-encompassing backdrop that stands on its own. But 40k for itself is all about the galactic wars that are unending. It's focused this way because it represents the background for a tabletop war game that is surprisingly about factional war. 40k itself operates on a fairly healthy dose of irony. Much of the events and organizations forces and individuals often are the result of half-truths or pure indoctrination and some scars. of those that are held up as heroes are not what they appear to be and as usual the context of events are very important but many things can end up being actually quite subjective the fact that the imperium itself has through its devout worship of the emperor now has its state religion embedded in almost everything it does which is hilarious when you consider the emperor of man set out to eradicate religion from humanity entirely. Right, right. Warhammer 40k draws from a lot of historical events and ideologies. It also borrows heavily from other settings like Dune, 2000 AD, Lovecraftian influence, obviously Tolkien, and even older texts like Milton's Paradise Lost and the Divine Comedy with Dante and the Inferno. 
40k has okay. continued to be fleshed out over time and it shows no signs of abating if anything it's moving forward at a faster pace than ever it is a universe that has consumed me for some 30 years and i highly recommend that you allow the darkness Damn, of the far years. future to enter your life you may live to regret it but you will undoubtedly enjoy it thanks for watching guys as always if you have a suggestion for what my next 40k primer should oh wow wow okay <laughs> i loved it i loved it right the goosebumps what the hell well congratulations to us on watching the the first video by luton on the stream this is a big deal again thank you so much to luton for being so patient with me <laughs> <laughs> and for letting us uh, do this letting us watch this react to it and then yeah thank you Luton for making all these videos top tier very nicely done amazing images the voice the pace of it the the music everything just like just merges together so well I love it I love it. I love it. This is like, like this is a different vibe. This is totally a different vibe from what we've been watching so far. It's like you can tell she's getting serious, you know, <laughs> which is uh, exciting and uh, kind of um, kind of scary at the same time, but more 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 exciting. Oh yeah, less meme. Like you know, so there's a lot of dark humor and satire and warhammer 40k but <clears throat> it's just it's fun to meme about it but it's also to be fun uh, but it's also fun to be serious about it just like luton said i could have said it better myself <laughs> as for the next luton's videos we're going to watch the emperor of man part one next time so prepare yourself for that it's a long video it's a serious video Thank you so much for watching and a special thanks to the members of our channel for their support. Thank you so much.